is uh, big G, big G times little g, little g. Okay, so we have all green and all yellow. So the F1 will be big G and little g, because there's only one allele coming from each parental. And you get uh, big G, little g. So we have 100% green and 100% uh, big G, little g. So that's your phenotype, and this is your genotype. Okay, so big G, little g is your geno. The green is your pheno. So the F2 takes two of these. Okay, and I'm going to put it over here. So your F2 from here is going to be a big G and little g and big G and little g. Okay, and that's what you should get. Okay, so if I look at my genotype, I'm going to have one big G, big G to two big G, little g to one little g, little g. Or 25% big G, big G, 50% big G, little G, 25% little G, little G. But your phenotype uh, should be uh, three green to one yellow. Okay? And that's what this shows. So two is the same thing. It says in one of his experiments, Mendel counted 6,022 yellow seeds and 2,001 green seeds. Write the genotypes and phenotypes of the plants and all the crosses he did in order to get these results. So it's the same thing. So you have a 3 to 1 dominant to recessive trait. Now these are seeds, not pods, right? So make sure you take account of that. Okay. Yellow seeds are dominant to green seeds, whereas green pods are dominant to yellow pods. All right, so there's about 8,000 individuals, um, and 75% of them all have the dominant phenotype. So you would show the same thing, right? Uh, true breeding, P generation... Uh, F1's all heterozygous and two heterozygous spread together will give you this Punnett square for question number two. Okay, um, so independent assortment uh, talks about different traits. This is dealing with more dihybrid crosses. I'm not going to talk about dihybrid crosses today. I'm going to skip over that. I'm going to do everything dealing with monohybrid crosses for this lecture today. So we're, looking, we're just going to look at one trait. So there are some extensions off of uh, Mendel's laws here, so incomplete and co-dominant. So the number of genetic patterns have been studied that are deviants from Mendel's original work. These patterns of inheritance can be explained by Mendel's laws. So incomplete dominance is a condition in which neither of the two alleles for the same gene completely conceal the other. Um, you get a hybridization of both traits. Um, so there's a blending of the traits rather than an expression of one or the other. So when representing incomplete dominance, upper and lowercase letters are not used. Uh, uppercase letters with subscripts are used here. So you have um, this and this. Uh, sickle cell anemia is an example of incomplete dominance. I'm going to show you that as well. So they still are sorted independently, but you have two dominant traits. This is called polygenic traits, where you have multiple alleles that, can, that, that uh, uh, are expressed in a dominant fashion. But all of these uh, incomplete dominant um, individuals will show a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of offspring when two heterozygotes are combined. Okay, so sickle cell anemia, as I said, is a good example of incomplete dominance. So you have hemoglobin alleles, all right, where one um, makes normal hemoglobin and one makes sickled hemoglobin. So this is called heterozygote advantage. Okay, so we've already talked about this with ecology, but in areas that are malaria stricken, um, it is good to be heterozygous because you'll produce some normal hemoglobin alleles and you'll produce some that are sickled 
All right, so your red blood cells will look normal, right? They'll look like that or they'll look like this. So this is sickles. Okay, so if an individual is heterozygous, so if they have HBA, HBS, so they have some sickled cells and the rest are normal. Okay, um, malaria is something that uh, uh, infects blood and, and then destroys red blood cells. Uh, it's a protist that is injected by mosquitoes. Um, so what happens is, is when the malaria protist gets into the body, um, the protist, like, so malaria attacks the sickled cells, and these are left alone. So the normal red blood cells are left alone. The sickled cells get attacked, and the protist gets, ends up in here, right? So malaria protist. So what happens is, is the immune system recognizes the protist inside the sickled cells, and the white blood cells will destroy the sickled cells. So they end up in, in the abnormal cells, and they don't affect normal red blood cell function. Okay, so there is some compromise, but there's still red blood cells that can function. Okay. So this shows incomplete dominance. You're going to get a blending of traits, right? So both of these are expressed. Uh, sorry, I should say that when I look at sickle cell anemia, sickle cell anemia is not incomplete dominance. It is co-dominance. I'm going to talk about that as well. But equa traits are equally expressed, not blended. So you'll have some red blood cells that are normal and some that are sickled. So both of these exist at the same time. Um, but here is um, let's look at uh, let's look at page five ninety six in McGraw Hill again. Uh, questions six and seven. So you have, um, uh, these are uh, snapdragons or four o'clock flowers. Okay. Uh, these are roan horses. Okay, so make sure you look at your textbook. So black and white together gives this blue coloration. So this is a good example of incomplete dominance because there's either black hairs or white hairs, but when they exist both together, they, they create something new. Whereas with incomplete dominance, things just look separate, which is sickle cell anemia. But they exist at the same time together. Uh, on page 612 in your Nelson textbook, I am going to look at that. But there are some more incomplete and co-dominant questions here. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, number six says the gene that codes for color in snapdragons exhibits incomplete dominance. A true breeding red snapdragon is crossed with a true breeding white snapdragon. Um, incomplete means the red and the white will come together to make pink. What is the phenotype ratio of the F1 generation? And the F1 offspring are then crossed to produce an F2. Okay, so I'm going to put this on, the, on my chalkboard. So this is uh, number six, page 596 in uh, McGraw-Hill. So uh, you have two true breeding snapdragons. So uh, R1, R1, uh, so we use the same alleles because they're both dominant. 
Okay, so they're both expressed and one's not expressed over the other. So this one is a red dragon and that one is a white snapdragon. These are flowers. Okay, so there's my P generation. So my F1 is gonna be this, right? R1 and then R2, and then I'm gonna have R1, R2. Okay, uh, so what's gonna happen here is we have 100% pink snapdragons. So the white and the red come together to make pink. Okay. Um, the F2 is going to be, um, you're going to have uh, two F1s, right? So you'll have R1, R2, and then R1 and R2 bred together. So you have R1, R2, R1, R2. Then you'll end up with this, R1, 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 R2, R1, R2, and R2, R2. All right. So here's the deal with uh, uh, incomplete dominance is What's going to end up happening with the phenotype is you're going to get one red to two pink to one white individual. One to two to one. So you get this one to two to one phenotypic ratio with incomplete and codominance when you have two heterozygotes that breed together. Okay, so you should understand that. Okay, same thing happens with codominance. All right, so here's the other, here's another one, um, number seven, page 596 in McGraw Hill. It says two blue roan horses are bred together. What is the chance that the colt will be white? So again, you have um, uh, B is black hair and white, right? So W equals white. Um, right, so B, B equals black. In this case, uh, W, W would be white, but here you get a roan horse. And again, this is a blending, so it looks blue. So that is uh, incomplete dominance. So the question is asking two blue roan horses, so two B, W horses are bred together. And so this is seven on page 596. <clears throat> okay, so two blue roan horses are bred together. And it's asking what's the probability that it'll be white, right? And so you'll have W, W. Right, so your probability is 25%. Right, because you have a 25% chance of black, 20, and then a 50% chance of roan when two roans are bred together. Okay. Um, so that's what uh, page 612 addresses as well here. Um, <clears throat> a horse that is homozygous for the uh, allele CR will have a chestnut or reddish coat. A horse that is homozygous for the allele CM will have a very pale cream coat called cremello. Palomino code is determined by the interaction of both the chestnut and the cremello allele. So you get a blending of those two alleles. So this is incomplete dominance. So indicate the expected genotypic ratio and phenotypic ratio if you have a palomino horse with a cremello horse. So if I look at that one, uh, this is Nelson, page 612, number 2. Okay, so the question is asking um, Palomino and Cremello. So Palomino is, um, right, so the CR, CM, right, when you, when you look at the question, that's Palomino, and it's bred with a Cremello horse, which is CM, CM. 
Okay, it's asking me what do we get? So CRCM times CMCM. Okay, so when that comes together um, with a Carmelo and a Palomino horse, 50% uh, of the offspring should be Palomino, 50% of the offspring should be Carmelo. Okay, so, uh, so you need to know the difference between co and incomplete. So co is when both traits are expressed equally um, and incomplete is when a blending occurs. Uh, this is going to be the last thing that I talk about, uh, gene linkage. Um, I'm going to talk about um, blood typing and, and X-linked inheritance uh, in this lecture as well. Um, I'm going to stop this lecture right now and continue on um, with a new video. Okay, uh, and I'll give you some uh, more examples uh, uh, once I continue this. All right, so I'm going to sign off for now and uh, and I'm going to continue this lecture after I've downloaded this piece of information. Bye for now.